Hi, this is Tim. Welcome back. For those viewers that uh, follow my channel, um, and for those that don't, um, welcome and thanks for watching this video. I've decided to upgrade one of my wireless access points to one that uh, supports 6 gigahertz. As uh, some new devices I have now um, take advantage of these. I thought we'd do a quick unboxing and then I'll take you through the steps to add it to the unified network controller. So it comes in a nice neat box as the normal ubiquity equipment does. Let's take the lid off and see what we've got inside. First we have the uh, access point which has a clear plastic cover on which can be removed. It's just for transit. Then inside we've got the wireless access point. And this is a U6 Pro wireless access point. It feels quite heavy. Um, it feels very solid as normal Ubiquiti equipment does. Um, at the back we have uh, one PoE Plus in port. As you will see hopefully there. And also there's the usual reset switch. We also have uh, in the box a cardboard template with a spirit level guide in there um, for assisting with mounting it to wherever you choose. Also there's a mounting plate um, which is used to mount it for to ceilings or walls or um, suspended ceilings. Also there's a metal ring which is also used to uh, fix the access point to uh, ceilings or walls. This would go uh, for example in the ceiling it would go the opposite side and then this will go for the underside and then the unify access point will be clipped there. We also have the set of uh, screws fixings and also the uh, rubber grommet which goes into the Unify access point like so. There's also the getting started card with the uh, QR code on the back and also at the bottom on the front as well. And then also is let's take a look and see what this has inside. Yeah it's basic uh, assembly instructions, the leaflet on how to assemble it. Probably best to uh, use the guide that's already provided on the Ubiquiti website which is a lot more comprehensive. Pack it all back in the box temporarily. As I'll be uh, setting up the wireless access point first and testing it without installing it onto the ceiling just to make sure it is actually working properly. So uh, in the next step I'll guide you through how to do that. I'll now show you how to set it up in the Unify controller and uh, configure the various options. Let's get straight to it. First things first, once you've connected your U6 Pro via an uh, Ethernet cable into one of the PoE ports on your switch or via the uh, PoE injector into your switch. So in the top right corner of the screen, click on the symbol here with the square and select network from the pop-up window that appears. This will then take you into your Unify network dashboard. So from that you need to go to the left hand side and click on Unify devices which is similar to the donut icon and then from your list of unified devices your U6 Pro should be showing up in the list and uh, ready to be adopted. So click under the status where it says click to adopt and then from the right hand side pop up window click adopt device. This will then show as updating under the status here and just wait for it to complete. At this point you can close the 
pop-up window from the right hand side using the X symbol here. Now we notice that the firmware status is showing as updating along with the status is also showing as updating. So just wait for the firmware to uh, complete its update before proceeding any further. So when you see the status is showing as online and the firmware status showing as up to date here for the U6 Pro, you can then click on the U6 Pro to uh, configure it further. Here you'll see the model number from the right hand side it's saying a U6 Pro IP address which is a DHCP assigned IP address. We'll be changing this to a static IP address. Um, if you've watched my previous video, you'll know that I use static IP addresses for various devices. Underneath that, you'll see the device version currently showing a 6.2.39. So the first thing we need to do is click on Insights. Then from Insights, you'll see that channel usage status bars are showing and for the RF environment you will see it showing 2.4 gigahertz RF environment if you click on it to pull the drop down list down you'll see also the 5 gigahertz RF environment option so at the moment we will be keeping the 2.4 gigahertz RF environment and then proceed to click scan channels then when the pop-up window appears click confirm and what this will do is scan the 2.4 gigahertz frequency range to find available channels which are mostly not used and it will also show channels which are congested this will help us decide which wireless network channels we will be allocating to the U6 Pro in order to get the best wireless network service for our clients. So just wait for the scan to finish, which could take two or three minutes. Now that the channel RF environment scan has finished, you will see that the status is shown to online and the last scan is showing now instead of running, it's now showing as seven minutes ago. So what you need to do is look for a channel which has the lowest population of color and down below these uh, 20 megahertz and 40 megahertz channel lists you will see that there's a legend table which has a color coded bar across it running from light orange to dark red uh, with starting at minus 96 dBm going up to minus 48 dBm what we need to do is to try and select a box in the 20 megahertz channels with either nothing in the box or something very low in the box so for example if I hover over this channel you will see that it appears as channel 5 with a channel width of 20 megahertz so the utilization on this is also showing as 11% for channel 13 the utilization is showing as 1% um, also with a channel width of 20 megahertz so I'm going to be selecting channel 4 which has a utilization of 7% with a channel width of 20 megahertz so just make a note of the channel number and also the channel width so I'm noting down channel 4 as 20 megahertz then under the RF environment here underneath you'll see the drop down list and it's showing as 2.4 gigahertz RF environment click here and then from the drop down menu that appears select 5 gigahertz RF environment and then this will take you into the screen where it will reveal the usage of the RF environment for the 5 gigahertz channels. Now again I'm using 20 megahertz channels 
so as you can see I've got channel the next one available is channel 52 and the utilization is 0% and the interference is minus 95 dBm which is very good so I'm going to note down channel 52 and again 20 megahertz now the reason why I'm using 20 megahertz is because these are generally non overlapping channels which don't overlap with all the channel numbers um, if you proceed to use 40 megahertz 80 megahertz and so on then these generally are overlapping channels as you'll see under 80 megahertz you'll see that the channels used is channels 100 104 108 and 112 even though the channel number is 106 it does use all channels so try not to use these overlapping channels if you can help it if your RF environment for example is really saturated then I would definitely choose 20 megahertz channels only so now that we've done the RF scan and noted down the channel numbers we will be using we need to click on the settings here and then under the name I'm going to call it WIAP01 as in wireless access point 01 in previous videos I explained that I use names for my various devices which I always have done and which I remember for example ROUT01 is the router which is the UDM Pro SWIT is a switch as you can see switch 01 and switch 02 so I'm renaming the U6 Pro into WIAP01 as in wireless access point number one going to click apply changes wait for the status to change from getting ready to online again now that the status has changed back to online we can proceed further with changing the other settings under use global AP settings turn that off and also for nightly channel optimization turn that off then proceed down to the radio section and for the 2.4 gigahertz radio you need to select the channel width as HT20 which is the 20 megahertz channel band and then under the channel number I'm selecting channel 4 which is what I noted down earlier from the RF environment scan under transmit power you can leave that as auto enable minimum RSSI leave that as disabled as it is then proceed to the 5 gigahertz radio and select the channel width as HE20 and then the channel number select channel 52 which is the channel number I noted down earlier along with the 20 megahertz band transmit power you can leave that as auto and then enable meshing leave that as on and then for auto under the enable meshing as well leave that as auto under LED if you prefer to have your LEDs on and illuminated on your wireless access point then leave the enable LED section as it is but I like to uh, turn my LEDs off on my wireless access point so I'll disable this then proceed down to network and you will see that it's saying using DHCP as you know I use static IP addresses for various devices on my network so I'll be selecting the drop down option and selecting static IP then under the IP address I'll be changing this to 192.168.1.20 which is the IP address of the previous wireless access point that I'm replacing this U6 access point with so the IP address of that was 192.168.1.20 and then under preferred DNS you need to enter the IP address of your UDM Pro and then under the subnet mask you need to enter 255.255.255.0 alternate DNS can be left blank so then proceed to down to gateway and enter the same IP address as in the preferred DNS which is 
1.168.1.1, which again is the IP address of my UDM Pro. Under DNS suffix, you can leave that blank and then click apply changes. Wait for the status to change from getting ready back to online and then we will proceed further. Now that the status has changed back to online, you can then proceed to close the configuration window from the right hand side using the X here. And if you have Wi-Fi 6 enabled devices on your network and you wish to take advantage of a higher network speed, megabits per second, then I would recommend you select the 5 gigahertz radio as either HE80 or HE160 which will uh, enable you to connect your client devices to your Wi-Fi network at the higher available network speeds. And this completes the adding of the uh, U6 Pro wireless access point. Uh, one thing I should say is that uh, I had difficulty obtaining uh, U6 Pro directly from Ubiquiti, but if you do want one, I do know of a company that has, at the moment, at the time of recording this video, at least 1,000 in stock. I'll put the link below in the video description where you can buy these U6 Pros from. Thanks for watching and please do hit the subscribe button if you haven't done already and also please do give me a thumbs up. Um, I'd like to also say thanks to all the new subscribers recently. Keep a lookout for further videos. Thanks.